So hello, uh, my name is Niklas Sarakari. I work at F-Secure in... Toimiko nyt? So, kuuluuko se? So, my name is Niklas, I work at F-Secure. Uh, I'm doing security stuff over there, uh, hacking and all sort of security consulting. And today I'm talking about why popping an alert box is not enough or why do you have to have more better proof of concepts when you're doing security assessments for organizations. So this is basically, uh, I think the, I actually saw this on Twitter a few weeks ago where Jeff McChunking says that uh, basically just if you gain domain admin and just have a screenshot about it for the customer, it's basically same as giving like alert XSS in a web app that you're assessing. So it only gives the potential impact of the discovered uh, finding of the security assessment doesn't really give any real, let's say, comprehension for the customer actually what is, what, what is the impact and what is probably the risk for the company or its customers and so on. So when we're doing a security assessment for the client, we actually have to provide them some real, real uh, scenarios where we can actually exploit those discovered issues. So why does it matter? Uh, well, basically, the person with the money doesn't act, is not actually interested about the vulnerability itself. It's more about interested about what can you do with that vulnerability and what, what, what's, what is its impact to them and the data they have and so on. Uh, and also, uh, what if the discovered vulnerability would lead to, a, let's say, an account takeover or it will disclose sensitive data, but instead you just provide them, yeah, well, there's, there's basically an uh, SQL, uh, your database banner from the SQL injection and you have your alert one on the report. So basically that doesn't give anything to the customer itself to actually go to their, let's say, software developers to say, hey, this is actually bullshit or not. So basically you have to have something real for them. And there are also these vulnerability assessments and there are also real vulnerability assessments. So there are two types of stuff that you can do. And the, and the one is that you is sometimes encountered is that you run this uh, automated vulnerability scanner and you have this like bunch of fine findings stating all kinds of stuff about your environment and then you just do that automated report and send that to the customer. Well, that doesn't really give anything real for the customer itself. So. I've seen also in my own, own personal experience that I've done these scans is that basically usually 90% of them are false positives. So you might have, yeah, you have three, 400 PHP vulnerabilities and let's say 200 Apache vulnerabilities, but basically all of them are false positives. So basically you always have to validate all the issues that you find, do that scan and actually see that if there's actually any real impact on these findings that are provided by those scans. And also, um, the customer itself might not always understand that. So basically you are in charge of actually providing that information to the customer itself. And when doing these assessments and scoping these assessments, there's always usually good to have some objectives and goals that you have that are in the target of that assessment. For example, you as a tester when, when scoping the project and, it's, and so on, you basically have to have an understanding about, let's say, the application or the infrastructure or the, let's say, business that they are working on, that you can actually take that as an input and actually try to correlate those findings regarding about what is that possible impact of these findings to that customer and the data they have. And there's also some cases for example, that the customer just comes to you and says, well, I just want to buy security for, let's say, 10,000 euros, so just give me something that I can buy with this. Then, then you have this kind of responsibility as a tester to actually try to figure out what, what, does, it, what does he or she actually needs, what does the organization, organization needs, what is the data that they have, and what will be the possible impact. Let's say if we find these issues, but let's say you only, pay, you only wanted security for three days and we have these all possible issues here, so there is some Vigor room that you have to discover. And this is something that been <laughs> encountered a few, a few times in these objectives and goals stuff that the uh, customer just say, yeah, please come and pen test our internal in Windows infrastructure and just trying to get the domain admin. Well, well, yeah, domain admin is, is good to have, but that should not be the only goal in an engagement when you're doing penetration testing for the customer itself. Because usually when you get the domain admin, there are 
bunch of other stuff you can also do, and that domain admin is only one of the goals that you should try to get. Usually there might be critical data lying around, sensitive data like passwords, uh, credit card data, banking information that we've been discovering in infrastructure and servers and so on. And let's say R&D information, uh, very sensitive data that is actually related to that company's IPR, for example. And if that would leak out, then having only domain admin is like, well, we got this, but we didn't find all this data that you have laying around here. So basically you're missing all that bigger picture that they are actually more interested maybe than just getting the domain admin. So I said that domain admin will be only one of those many objectives that when you are doing assessments that should be regarded. So when doing assessments, uh, there's this, I don't know, probably may have heard this, like chaining exploits. So if you find one and you find another one, then you can basically combine these together and get the impact is much more critical when you find, let's say, you have an XSS vulnerability and you might have an authentication or access control issue. And when you combine these together, then you might get more critical impact on that let's say on that customer, on, the, on that engagement, instead of you will just handle them uniquely. So all, as I'm meaning is that whenever you find these security issues, you always should look on the bigger picture to think about, so if, is there any ways that I can actually combine these and use this with this one to gain some other information from that, from that target. <coughs> so there is this, uh, this is from uh, SANSEC, 542, it's uh, the web application pen testing course. They discuss about this attack methodology. It's like cyclical and in, in iterative process that in this first phase, you're doing reconnaissance and you're searching information about the target that you are having, the, the target that you're assessing. And then you have the mapping phase that you're looking at like, what are the technologies it uses? What are the functionalities in that, in that application or in that environment? And then you go to the discovery phase, you try to find uh, possible security issues, you do, do fuzzing, as was talked previously, to discover if there are any low-hanging fruits or more complex log logic issues, and then you go to the exploitation phase, where you try to discover, like, you're writing proof of concepts to think about how can I actually exploit these issues, and when you find a way to exploit that issue, then you will start it all over again and start looking at another issues, for example, you're doing a web app pen testing and you see, oh, well, there's these input validation stuff that are interesting. You find something over there and then you move on, se on a second control, let's say authentication or access control, and you look into that and you find from there some, some security issues and then you try to look into, maybe I can combine these together and see if there is any, any possible way to actually find ways to exploit it more deeper. So, dig deeper. Uh, I have encountered cases that I found a security issue, uh, let's say in a web application, in an infrastructure, and then, then I start looking in, into, into more closely. So let's say you have a SQL injection in a web application. Well, that, not, that might not be basically, may, might be just a medium finding or some, something, and you just grab the banner and say, yeah, you have a SQL injection, but the customer is like, so what? What does it mean, actually? Well, you, I get access to your backend database. Well, that's bad, but is there something else also that I can find? Well, you can also look in the, let's say, in the users and passwords table, and you see, ah, oh, well, they are using uh, not so secure hashing algorithms like MD5 and with, with no salt. So that's pretty bad issue nowadays already. And then you start looking more, more about it, and you can see, oh, well, it's a, it was a testing environment, but it's multi-tenant, and you can see other customers' data from that same database. So now you're getting like really big bad stuff over there. So there's like this customer bought this project from us and we are testing it and now we can see like five to 10 different customers data on that same database that shouldn't actually be there at all. So don't just meet the minimum when you're doing security assessments. Uh, it's like also some due diligence in your, in let's say in the testers mind that when you find a security issue, always try to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Go, go down that rabbit hole to see actually if there is something more that you can find and exploit and show to the customer that, that this is actually something that you really need to fix. Because if you just give them, a, well, this is your, uh, your database banner or this is just an alert box, they're like, so what? Well, we can fix this at some point, but it's not that critical. Well, basically it is because all your data is like here, and this is your neighbor's data and their neighbor's data, 
and so on. And uh, another case, uh, this was more related to the infrastructure testing, that I have some experiences that are, so let's say we found a JBus server where you get access to with admin, admin credentials. And well, okay, when you get to the JBus, you know what you can do after that, where you can upload some uh, malicious Java files in that and you can get system access to that backend server. And after that, you retrieve the local admin passwords or the credentials from the from the memory, and then you go deeper and deeper, and you use those credentials to say, does those credentials work anywhere else? Yeah, well, you find 30 plus more servers that you can access with those same credentials. And then you go even deeper, and you check that, oh, one of the servers is the Windows ADFS server. So let's see, it has vDigest enabled, which means that basically all the credentials that are going through that authentication process are actually stored clear text in that memory. So you dump the memory and you got, oh, well, I have 500 credentials now. So let's say if you would only stop on the first phase, you would actually not know any of those rest stuff that you would have missed in that case. So always, always go through that pro same process. You find a vulnerability, you exploit it, and then you go start it all over again and you go look more like, uh, let's see, now I'm in here. What else can I do here? Uh, you find something else and you go deeper again and you see, well, Okay, so I can I have these admin credentials, but can I use these credentials anywhere else? And you get the point. <coughs> so another example that I've encountered is that uh, in, in web app stuff is that there was a, a client that actually had a very secure securely implemented REST API service. I mean, there wasn't really any issues in that. But uh, what they were actually done is that uh, they implement, implemented or embedded another service that they took, it was an open source service, and they embedded in an iframe in that application. And unfortunately, they, or lucky for me, was that the embedded application actually had a XSS vulnerability, so basically you run JavaScript in that web application's context. And since it was in embedded with an iframe, it's on the same domain, so same origin policy, so yay. So basically I have all access to that same REST API service, so I can just use that XSS vulnerability and access all the data from the REST API service, which was like the most, most critical service that they had. So, well, bad on them and good for me because this is the way that I can show them basically you just, let's say, fucked up your whole secure REST API client system just embedding using a simple iframe, iframe application in that application. Uh, well, let's take uh, think about another example is that, uh, well, there is a password reset functionality, and this is pretty common in web applications. And uh, when, you, when you're doing the password reset, it doesn't actually check that, uh, that does it actually, do you actually send the old password? So you can just change the password and just remove the old password parameter, and it will go through. Well, that itself would not be an, a big issue because there's basically no way you can get a victim to send a post request to the backend without any other vulnerability in that system. So I start to think about, well, I have to find something else in this application that I can actually exploit this discovered issue in this application. So you start fuzzing, you start looking at the functionalities all over the application, and you get, ah, there's an XSS vulnerability over here. So now you have uh, two issues. You have the uh, input validation issue or the output validation issue with XSS, and you have this uh, access, control, access control issue with the password reset functionality. So now you combine these two, and you build a request. You check how the password reset functionality request goes. Uh, you build this f uh, functionality as a payload to your XSS vulnerability, and you can use that to actually get, have an account takeover uh, ac exploit in that application. So now the customer is more interested in, in a case to actually fix these issues instead of just having that, oh, well, it doesn't validate the old password, but it's not a big deal. We can fix it at some point. But now actually they, it is more critical for them to fix this because if someone else uses this and they get access to other people's data. Uh, and the third case, there was on this IAM service, which is like centralized authentication. Uh, service for multiple applications. And there were a couple of security issues that I discovered. Uh, one was this uh, cross-origin resource sharing uh, issue that basically allows two-way interaction from all over the internet. And uh, the other one was that uh, 
in this service that when you were modifying your user information, it wasn't actually validating the CSR of token to actually check that it comes from the person it was intended from to come. So in, the, in this case, you're gonna, you couldn't actually exploit these issues uh, separately because you needed basically the both, both ones because when you were changing your information, it would actually send uh, this out zero user ID that was basically, it, well, it is basically impossible to brute force. So you know how the, uh, let's say, the account change information works, but you don't have the out zero user ID. So now in this case, you can basically use that course misconfiguration issue and get that uh, another user's out zero user ID by luring, by luring him to, let's say, visiting your site. And from there, it will return in a response his or her user out zero user ID. And then you can get that value and use that in that another exploit. And that's where you can modify that information. And again, you get an account takeover uh, use case in, in here. So in conclusions, the, when doing security assessments, the important thing is to always look at the bigger picture when discovering vulnerabilities, like what is the vulnerability, what is the functionalities, what is the data, how can I actually abuse these functionalities and this vulnerability that I discovered? Is there some real use case? Let's say if I have an XSS vulnerability, is it reflected, is it stored, how does how can I use it to interact with other people? Uh, if there is an authentication or access control issue, how does that, how can I combine those with the previous issues that I've found? And also, you must be able as a tester to provide all the necessary information for the customer to help them understand the impact and make, the, and make the decisions because let's say the customer always has some sort of purpose for buying those services from you. Let's say they have a, they've been thinking about, yeah, we have this new application that will do, let's say, all our ERP stuff, for example. So if you discover like several critical issues from there and you only say, well, this was, these are critical because you can potentially do this stuff, now, well, so what? But if you can actually show them, well, I can leak all your account information here without, uh, un, out, without authentication, then there is an case that they might not even use that application or, or leave it and buy another one. So there is actually, as a tester, there is some responsibility to actually try and figure out how we can actually exploit these issues the best way possible and not just being like, hey, there is an XSS vulnerability, there is a SQL injection or, or something else, but it doesn't really matter in a way because you're, maybe you're too lazy or you don't know, but it is something that you should always do to try to figure out how these can be exploited. And also, uh, writing proof of concept is awesome and you can always learn from them. And I have encountered several cases that first I, be, I would look at the vulnerability and be like, well, I have no idea how to actually exploit this. Or I, I can, I, I just, first I have that alert box or grabbing the banner. But when you start to think about it more and more, and you find different ways to actually go deeper into it and try to f figure, f figure ways out to actually modify it so that you can actually combine those vulnerabilities and gain access to this that data that you would not supposed to actually get access to. Questions? <laughs> Rarely. I, there have been some cases that are like, well, it doesn't really matter about, but when you, you have something, that's why you have the proof of concept, you can actually provide them that data that this actually works. I have had cases that 
I found like several vulnerabilities in an application and communicated them to the customer, like showing them the proof of concepts and the impacts and everything. And just in case they like just banned me from, from the communication channels. It is possible, but it's rare. It's like maybe one in a two in a hundred or something like that. It's not that common. So basically, if I would get powerful credentials and I would not go well, and pilfer around the network. Because of the time constraints. Yeah, I mean, there is, yeah, I usually tend to follow these sort of time constraints in the project within that I would only spend specific, because the time is constrained, so I would spend only a specific amount of time looking at one thing and then I would move into another. Because in that case, if you just bang your head around that same thing for, let's say, days and days and days, then you miss all that other stuff. So it's also something that the tester has to understand that you cannot just, so if, if you only want to get the domain admin, mean, you spent week trying to get it, and you only have two days left, so there is, <laughs> most in most cases, you will miss critical stuff. And that is also something that when doing assessment is that the, when you're scoping this engagement is that you have to understand the width and the, how, how large is the network infrastructure, for example, what are the, are all, is the whole environment in scope or only specifics in scope, and that is something that has to be discussed with the client itself. Anything else? Well, when doing uh, engagements with the customer, it, you, it, it is usually between us and the customer itself. Of course, if there are stuff that they bought the software or it's open source software and you find vulnerabilities in that, then you can do the responsible disclosure with also the software vendor and communicate with them or through cert, certify and so on. But usually when you discover issues and, and the client has bought the software, let's say, from a software developing company here in Finland or somewhere else, and it's not like open open source or anything, then it's usually communicated with those three parties. And it's not it's not something that we we will go on Twitter and hey, there's actually a vulnerability over here. That is not something that we do. <laughs> Mm. Um, uh, is in danger. What do you do? You have moral responsibility, but you have a contractual responsibility also to ask. What's your take on that? Then? Well, my personal take is on that is that I would not go to publicly discuss about the issues or publicly disclosure it because that is something that I'm in contract with my employer and they are contract with the client. So that is something that should be handled with them. And the best effort that we, we've done, we, we would always try to get the best effort to actually communicate that you really should fix these issues. And, and thank God that is usually the case that they will actually fix the issues because that is something that we have to communicate them that if you don't fix this, then the impact is that if someone else abuses this, then you will probably go out of business or there will be a really bad reputational impact on your company and so on. How much of your job is about finding bad configuration like admin admin passwords or or deployments with known vulner vulnerabilities and what about like novel <coughs> vulnerabilities or, or Well it or it's basically every, it is all the same. It's part of the engagement process or the methodology that we do. That let's say when in my 
in my personal perspective is that when I, let's say, if I go do a web app, is that I would actually first go through all the functionalities that I see, what is going on there, what, is, what sort of data, what kind of user accounts, user levels are there, and I would go all the basics, like fuzzing the low-hanging fruits, see what, what are over there, and then trying some basic word list to check that are there any uh, default credentials over there, and so on. So it's, it's part of the process itself. Hmm? What I mean is that I, I, the more elements that you are going to do your, your export, also the more, uh, <coughs> the more complex it is, in your own experience, how reusable is it? Um, so if you find this exact same number of faults into a system, can you predict that it will be uh, subject to the same export? Well, maybe something related to that is, let's say if a customer comes to, comes to us or comes to me and says that we will go into production in two weeks and we need to security test this, I would, I would probably say to them that you will not go into production in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that the customer's reaction will change in general tomorrow? GDPR. Uh, yeah, well, the GDPR is uh, <laughs> is another stuff that now has to be also taken into consideration. That when you find find issues, that there's been cases that a colleague of mine found that found this issue in this one application that was actually reve revealing like people's names and where they live and so on, and 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 he gave that information to the customer, and actually they think are like, well, this is pretty bad that we actually have to take take this into consideration and then they pumped it up into high and tried to fix that as soon as possible because it will be in conflict with the GDPR. So yeah, there are cases that when you find these issues is something that now has to, when you're writing the report and describing these issues and the impact, you also has to think about that. Yeah, this is actually will be in, I don't know how to say it, but in conflict with the GDPR itself. Yeah, well, basically, what if, what if the company's whole database gets breached? Well, I'm not a GDPR expert myself, so, yeah. but it's something that if a security issue is found and it is something, it relates somehow about information leakage, about personal data and so on, then it's something that has to be considered, of course, and, and there's also something that will be consulted and see how it will be communicated, but I'm not a GDPR expert myself, so. In the future, you have to text, uh, copyright and secure confidentiality. Are there any legal issues about us now? Huh? Are there any legal issues about us now here? No. Yeah, sure. It's it's my per <laughs> personal view. No, no, it's not. No. So uh, I want this question. So how often do you audit F secure? <laughs> Sorry. How often do you audit F secure like your own system? Are you doing that also? <laughs> well. <laughs> that Mm. Well, there's also something that, of course, that, that there is stuff being done, but that, let's say, if you would audit yourself and say everything is fine, then <laughs> it doesn't work also that way. Yeah? Yeah. Or, or 
Yeah. Well, basic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, let's say if you discover, let's say, in my opinion, it will be a critical or a high finding, I would, something that I would communicate to their customer direct, uh, immediately and directly and discussing about the issue that th this is something that we found and this is how, this is the impact of it and this is how can, it can be exploited. And of course, uh, doing proof of concepts and demonstrating these issues uh, in, let's say, after the final report in the final meeting is also something that helps to communicate the issue to the customer itself. So do you actually do that? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Real life, life stuff. How, how often do you do that? Or I, I would imagine it's mostly done text, but how often do you run into text where you actually have to showcase what you found to really make it? Well, it, it depends on the cases. Uh, I've been at F-Secure not that long, so I cannot say on the whole how everybody does it, but it's something that everyone decides probably by themselves how they actually want to demonstrate those issues. But that is something that I, my, personally, I, I feel it, it gets the point better in there to actually demonstrate it in some ways. Well, <laughs> let's say the, the best, uh, always we communicate to the customer that we would like to do it on the testing environment. And, but there are, of course, some cases that it, the testing just needs to be done in, a produ in production. There are some cases that they want, the customer might want to do it in production. So, of course, there are limitations to that. So, if you find a vulnerability in production environment, then you, of course, have to take precautions that you don't actually destroy data or modify other people's data and so on. But, Testing environment is something that should be always be the f priority of doing security testing. And of course, when you're doing the testing in, in uh, security testing and testing environment, if you find some bad issues and you want, there might be a case that you want to check it in production and then, then that's something that needs to be also communicated. <laughs>